this is to go over some basics from science fair expectations. So first of all, Zoom, make sure we are using your real name and you are staying on mute. Stay school appropriate at all times on all school communications. With the video function is optional. You don't have to uh, show your own video at any time during any of our Zoom meetings. Okay, so some things I wanna go through here is um, we're gonna be going through the things that were already posted throughout the assignment for environmental science. Okay, so number one, this was listed as your elective enrichment activity. Okay, so that was nothing was due prior to this week in terms of researching and doing experiments. Okay, as of yesterday, the school district said we're now giving assignments. So the science fair is now gonna be our first assignment. And yesterday, the governor said that school will not be in session for the rest of the year. So these will be our assignments, our assignments like this for the rest of the year. Okay, so first thing I posted was how to come up with science fair ideas. Okay. So you want to make sure they have good research project with good qualities. <clears throat> make sure they're testable, the real answer, measurable, falsifiable, interesting, and you don't already know the answer. And we'll go over some of those examples here in the next set. Okay. If you're dealing with humans, you have to do double blind studies. Um, none of you should be dealing with humans in your studies. If you do, you're going to have a lot of um, discussions with me and a lot of paperwork to turn in. That includes having yourself do anything uh, more than add the ingredients. Okay, so the research question should be, if I do this, then this will happen because, okay, you have a list of steps to go through all this. Okay, so the question has to be something that is not been covered in class or the previous year it has to be something you do not know the answer to already. Okay, it has to be relevant with a clear argument on how it affects life. Um, we can talk about those once you have your topic. Okay, guiding, guiding questions. What data will you collect? What would your hypothesis be? Does it build on something you already know? And what does your answer tell you? Okay, so there's a lot of ways we can find our topic. I'm not gonna go through all those right now, okay? Um, and then some environmental science topics we've seen, filtering air, filtering water, storing energy, energy flow through a system. Um, um, you could also have said material flow through a system, waste reductions, efficient systems. Uh, we also happen to do a lot of things about earthquakes. Um, you could do some of that as well. Okay, so. Your proposal, this was for next week. If you change X by this amount, and I am looking for numbers, and you change Y by some other number, or then Y should change by some other number, and because of, and this last part is what you should be working on right now. What are core properties that are guiding all these things? Okay, so that is our first set. Already been posted. So right now, this week, you should be filling out this document doing your background research. Okay, so you're gonna to go to a source, a credible source. You're gonna write down as many facts as you can find relevant to your study. And then you're gonna tell me why it is, cre it is credible and how you can tell. Okay, um, it should be multiple sources with multiple facts. You can decide how you're gonna fill out this page. It probably will bump over to a, another page or hopefully more pages. Okay, so this is the core assignment for this week, due 410. Okay, all right, once all that is done, you're, and some of you are already there, um, you should be looking at what are your expectations and what are you actually trying to do? You're trying to prove a cause and effect, okay? All right, so it can be complex in nature and design, okay? Or it can be a small scale mechanism, all right? For this class, the, sm well, the smaller the scale, the easier it will be to study. Okay, we wanna make sure we're avoiding just pure correlation of the statistical relationship of two things that happen to have in common. This is an interesting one um, because it is um, 
total revenue generated by arcades and the computer science doctorates awarded in the United States. Okay, they seem to follow each other, but there's absolutely no causation. It is purely correlation. Okay, so common mistakes that people make. Okay, there's no measurements. If I use a filter, then less smoke will get through. How much less smoke? What kind of filter? Okay, I need numbers on there. Okay, obvious answer. If I do not water plants, then the plants will die. Yes, that's obvious. I don't think you really need to research that. Okay, um, not enough physical resources. If I add 10 grams of plutonium, then the water will heat up 100 degrees. If you can get your hands on 10 grams of plutonium, that's a nuclear weapon. The US government's gonna to wanna to hear about that. There's no way you can run this research. You don't have the resources, okay? No causal link, going back to that correlation idea. If the lights in my room are blue, then the living room will heat up five degrees. What, what do those two things have to do with each other? You need to find some cause, some scientific property that brings two things together, okay? And then getting the right number of variables. If you have, if the amount of Coke, Mentos, soap, and shampoo all increase and are poured into a bottle, what I list? I listed four different variables. Okay, they're poured in the bottle, then the bathtub will be clean because bubbles clean things. Well, that's also a really weak causation there, okay? Um, did all those things affect it? Probably something, the soap might have cleaned the bathtub or one of the ingredients in shampoo, okay? But all those things put together, there's no way we know what the cause is, okay? Make sure we're not just doing an engineering project. If I build a toy car, then it will go, okay? What are you changing and what are you measuring is what we need to see. All right, so good examples. All right, this is one uh, chemistry students have done before. If a candle wick doubles in radius, then the candle will burn 50% faster because it has a greater oxygenation, okay? Doubling in size is a number, 50% faster is a number. We have a core property explaining it, okay? Second one, if one liter of water is injected into five liters of sand, then the solution will transmit 10 decibels better because P waves travel better through dense medium. Okay, there's something you could do in environmental science surrounding earthquakes, P waves. Okay, we have um, a measurement of water. We have a measurement of sand. Okay, we're only changing the amount of water. We're not changing the amount of sand. Okay, and then we have a measurement prediction. 10 decibels is louder. Um, your phone can measure decibels, so that's something that you could probably get. You all you have access to water and sand. All right, so now, and we have a core property. So that's another good example for environmental science or physics. Okay, so what are the properties of a good hypothesis? All right, um, by the way, my favorite kind of cookies. If you browned, if brown butter is added to cookie dough, then the cookies will be three shades darker on the von Lawson's chromatic scale because of the Mallard reaction. Okay, so notice in that first part of the sentence, it's a passive voice, something English teachers aren't very fond of, but it's used very frequently in science. You do not use I or we or you. It's the, the butter and the cookie dough that are the major actors in the sentence. Okay, we also in that first part, only one thing has changed. We changed how it is the butter is introduced. Do we use regular butter or do we brown the butter first? Okay, um, then there's a clear measurable prediction. Okay, that's the thing people probably get um, wrong most frequently is that they say it'll get better or it'll get more or it'll get less, but that's not a measurement. I want a number I can measure against to see if this final portion is correct. So if I have a good prediction from the second part, then that should validate the third part, the third part being a well-researched property that is identified. Okay, if we make a good prediction, that strengthens our argument that the mild reactions exist and are predictable, okay? So that is where we're going next week, okay? 
410 through 417 as getting a good testable prediction that you can then show me, okay? So when you show that to me, you're gonna be filling out this paper right here, filling in your appropriate numbers into a sentence format, relating it to the class, okay? With the materials and all the pieces, all right? Um, and then, Finally, how will this be graded at the end of the month? Okay, clear thing here is you're gonna have something relevant, it's gonna meet the standards, and it is gonna be original, okay? Um, if we go through and open up the standards here. All right, so the last thing that people might have questions about is the standards, all right? And that should be listed under standards. All right, so our standards here, we see a list of core content standards. These core content standards go through what we've discussed in class, okay? Ocean crusts, continental crusts, okay? Remember, we're talking about the, um, the sea crust separating and bringing out like uh, magnetic stripes, okay? Um, Earth's materials and planetary surfaces to construct for early Earth formation. Um, that would be an interesting thing to model if that's if you're interested in geology and volcanoes. Okay, um, remember you have to change something and you have to measure something in all of these. Okay, you're going to develop a model of how to illustrate Earth's internal and surface processes. Okay, so remember you only have to pick one of these from the core content standards. Okay, um, creating feedback loops. We did a lot of work on feedback loops. You could come up with your own example of that. All right, developing models to make based on the thermal convection. That's a classic cooking experiment here. We can do all sorts of things inside the kitchen looking at thermal, which is heat, convection, which is probably what your oven runs on, convection ovens. Okay, so we can go through all of these. These are your core content standards. You pick one of those somehow related to what you're interested in, okay? So we see you have a lot of choices in all these, okay? And then, where are we? Biodiversity, we're getting close here. All right, and then we get to the process standards. So once you have your core content standard, then we have a process standard. Process standards should be fairly easy to find here, okay? Why? Because we're trying to find, like, how is it important to uh, all citizens? Generating and evaluating a question. Okay, that's kind of what we're doing right here. All right, um, investigating a scientific process requires the use of methods appropriate answering different kinds of questions through gathering data needed to answer questions, care and collecting, analyzing, and displaying the data. Okay, I would be surprised if anyone does not hit that standard. Okay, um, same for conclusions. You're going to be really focused on these so that's going to make it easy to do the part two standard okay which means you just have to pick any of the earlier ones going up to do the part one standards okay all right so what's the moral of the story here this week you're gathering information you're taking notes and you're somehow linking it to a standard next week you're going to design an experiment, get it approved by your parents and me, and then conduct the experiment. All right, with that, let's see if we can.